All right, hello and welcome everybody, and welcome to the site that we are looking at right now, Flight Radar 24, the absolute best flight tracking site, at least in my opinion. Now I have already done videos on this in the past, one on a previous channel, and one several months ago on this channel. However, since then, the site has gotten a upgrade, or something of a makeover, you could say. They've changed the appearance of a lot of the icons. But regardless, if this is your first time seeing the site, if you didn't see the earlier video, this is an active radar or active flight tracking site, which means everything on screen is live. You can see those, those few aircraft just moved. It is constantly updating as data from the aircraft and data from uh, radar stations around the world constantly updates the site about their position. This thing up here, that number on the right, that's the total number of aircraft in the air over the world right now at this moment. The number on the left, where wherever you are, that's the number of aircraft that are on your screen at any given moment. Now one of the first changes uh, that we can notice is, is in small rear engine mounted single aisle aircraft like CRJs. We got one here, CRJ-1000. In the past, in the previous version, these and private jets had basically the same icon. However, now you may not be able to notice it in this video, but uh, you'll notice it yourself if you go to the site. Now between aircraft like CRJs and private jets like this uh, citation over here, you'll notice they do actually have different icons. On the private jet icon, the rear engines are basically right up into the wing. They kind of blend in to the silhouette of it. Whereas on the CRJ icon, the engines are actually distinctly behind and separate from the wing. So that's one of the first things you can notice. One of the other things that I wasn't expecting to see on screen that quickly here, you can see how much more massive the a uh, high altitude balloon icon has become. It used to be smaller. It used to be like, I don't know, a third the size of what that is on screen right now. They've now made they've now made the uh, the high altitude balloon icons a lot bigger. But also the icons for propeller aircraft have changed. Basically, they're kind of just a bit more detailed now. And here is one of the other big things. If you notice right there. The helicopter icon has gotten way more dynamic now. Previously, the helicopter icon was just the vague helicopter shape with an X over it, whereas actually now it has a set of in-motion blades on the icon, constantly flicking back and forth. That was not there previously, and that does help it feel like more alive. But among the smaller aircraft, you can also distinguish between Boeing and Airbus aircraft. On Airbus aircraft, sort of as it appears in real life, the wings are more towards the front, like this Airbus right here in A321. You can see the wings on the icon are more towards the front, and we'll find a Boeing somewhere. Probably go up this way, find, a, I don't know, some Ryanair 737 coming out of the UK. Here's a 737 right here. Ryanair, of course, because who else was it going to be? In Europe, at least. And then previously, the size difference wasn't so noticeable among the larger twin-engine aircraft. But here you can clearly see a size difference between that right there and these few, thi and these few things right here. This, this larger one will be a 777 or an A350. 777, and that shares the same one with the A350. That's Virgin Atlantic, so that's probably an A350-1000. Yep. Now, a smaller, large aircraft icon like that, uh, British Airways, that's probably a 787. Yep, 787. And that smaller, large, twin-engine aircraft icon will be for 787s, A330s, and 767s, like probably this. Yeah. 767. But that's United, so we don't want that on our screen. American Airlines, probably an A330, yep. And the 747 and A380 icons basically remain the same. And they're pretty distinct, you can pretty easily pick them out. Like you can see right there, the A380 is pretty clearly an A380. And the 747, there's one down there, 
Yeah, basically looks the same as before. And they have also added a distinct icon for the Airbus Beluga. I don't believe there's one on screen at the moment, but we'll look around in, oh, these tiny little things here. These are gliders. They've also added gliders. I don't think the Beluga is on screen at the moment, but they did add a distinct icon for it. Oh, there's a bunch of balloons around Liechtenstein. Some kind of party going on. And also, I'm not going to go hunting for it, but there is a icon for fighter jets now. It basically looks sort of like an arrowhead. And everything else is pretty much the same. Or for anyone who's never seen the site before, this is how everything goes. You can click on an aircraft. All the information appears on the left-hand side over here. The airport it's coming from, the airport it's going to, the times and everything, departure and arrival, scheduled versus actual and estimated, aircraft type, its serial number, registration numbers, all that stuff. Its altitude, its vertical speed, its current heading, even its age, the flag of the country of registration. This one's a Qatar Airways aircraft, so obviously it's registered in Qatar. And then you have speed, obviously it's in knots. You just hold your cursor over it and it'll convert it for you. This other information you can only get uh, by being different member, by being higher membership levels on the site. Now we're going to go over to East Asia to show you something that uh, I just noticed, or it might be new, but but I would lean more towards I probably am just blind and never noticed it before, where you can now actually set it so it will show you active volcanic activity. That big orange thing right there, that's a volcano, and this thing, the, and this thing here, this uh, just random polygon of sorts, that's its uh, projected ash flow of its ash plume. If that was always here, I never knew you could actually do that on the site, but I do now. So obviously I have it permanently on, so if there's any volcanoes erupting, it'll constantly show them. Unfortunately, the number of aircraft that can actually be on the screen is capped at 1,500. We're not actually at the cap, so let me zoom out so that uh, you'll actually see it stop counting. Yeah. See, un unfortunately, it caps out at 1,500. Otherwise, China, Japan, South Korea, all of East Asia and India combined on screen, you would have, you would have thousands upon thousands if that was an actual complete count. Also up here, not new, just something I didn't include the last time. You can go into data and history, and you can, if we go into statistics, if it actually feels like loading, there we go. And it gives you a chart that tracks the uh, total number of flights that occurred on each given day. And you can go into, you know, different uh, data sets here where it'll show you the four-letter code to enter into the filter. But you would enter these into the filter if you only want those aircraft to be shown on the screen. You can set the filter to control what you see. For the moment, you can see on here I have Airbus 350, 900s, A330neos. CS100s, or now A220s, but its code is still BCS1, and DC10s. So you click this, enable the filter, and boom! Everything's gone except the type of aircraft you want to see. But that's not the only type of filter you can do. You can also filter by airport, at altitude, speed, everything. Like if you wanted to do, say, JFK, I guess. Say J F or actually no, let's do let's do Paris, C D G, Paris, and you can choose whether you just want aircraft going to or coming from Paris. So we'll do both in and out, but we'll add that, and boom, and we have only aircraft coming to and from Paris, and I'm losing my voice apparently. You can go full screen. You can rewind, actually, and play back air traffic from earlier hours in the day. You go to settings, and this is where you get uh, stuff like the volcanoes. You can adjust the brightness. You can turn the day and night line off. You can actually have more than just the call sign appear next to or above the aircraft when you hold the cursor over it, if you want to at least. Adjust the aircraft icon size, and you go over to weather, and... 
And right there, the first option, volcanic eruptions. And actually one of the only ones that you can get without having higher membership. Visibility, you got all that. And you can set it to only airborne aircraft. By default, it includes by default it includes aircraft on the ground at any airports as well. You can turn off gliders, which I usually do, and ground vehicles. All right, well, they'll be the same size as, like, you know, one of the average aircraft icons, except they'll be a gray rectangle. Oh, wait, it looks like there's one in Abu Dhabi. Yes. Okay. Yeah, there you go. And they don't have call signs, obviously, because they're not flights. But those are ground vehicles. And you can click on the airport itself. And the first thing is just general information. And you can go to arrivals and or departures. And you'll get the whole list of all the upcoming scheduled departures and where they're heading to. And you can go back if you click on earlier. And obviously just scroll down. And you get later on stuff. But yeah, that's Flight Radar 24, the new cosmetic changes, and sort of just another rundown of the site. A much more detailed one than I did last time, at least. So I recommend using it. It's the absolute best, in my opinion. There are other flight tracking sites or flight radar sites, but Flight Radar 24 is my personal favorite. So that's it for the video. If you enjoyed, leave a like. If you like aviation stuff or aviation content of any kind, then please subscribe to the channel. I'm constantly uploading stuff now, so subscribe if you're any kind of aviation enthusiast. But thanks everybody for watching, may God bless all of you, and I will see you all around next time.